Today, we're going to be talking about TypeScript and how we can leverage uh, the concept of generics to refactor uh, some of our types and make them easier to support going forward and have less of a code footprint. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with TypeScript, TypeScript is a great way to improve the consistency and reliability in any JavaScript application. It also has a lot of tools um, on the developer experience side to improve your experience and make things easy to, to work in uh, because we can detect a lot of errors before they happen using the static analysis tooling that TypeScript comes with. Unfortunately, TypeScript types are code, uh, so they can tend to get a little unwieldy. Uh, so if we look at this example here, we can see some duplication and we are going to take care of that duplication using generics today. Before we jump in, I just wanted to share that this video is brought to you by Headway. We are a digital product studio. Uh, at Headway, we help high growth startups through product strategy, design, and software development. If you like this video or if any of those topics interest you, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you have any questions, leave a comment and we will get back to you as soon as we can. We do check them pretty often. So let's jump in. Uh, why use generics? We sort of covered that at the top, but really what um, the goal is, just like any other piece of software that we write, is to not write more code than we need to. Uh, and TypeScript has a lot of tools to help with that, the main one being using generics and being able to kind of extend your types and mix and match them together. So we're going to cover uh, the, the concept of generics and how that can, that can reduce our footprint a little bit. Um, we're just on the TypeScript playground here to uh, to take a look at these types and make sure that everything's compiling and, and working correctly. Uh, so we'll take a look at this. This is modeling kind of a, a common application, right? So we have some stuff, we query an API and we put it in a table. The stuff that we're concerned with is users and companies. Uh, and then we have options and a result. And if we take a look, let me move these around so it becomes a little more clear. So these are basically our domain objects here, right? We have a user, we have a company, and then we have options. Um, I named this one params and this one options because that happens all the time in, um, in some of the client work that we have where two developers work on something and they'll come up with different definitions or different names. But instead of looking at the type name, we can look at the properties and we can see these are almost the exact same. They have the exact same properties. The only difference is the types that are associated with those properties. In the options, we have name and age, name and state, so they're not identical. Uh, and then in the list, we have items and page, but the type of items is different. It's an array of something. So that is a great use case for generics when we have so when we say something like this is a type of something, this is a type of something. So generics can kind of fill that gap and be that something. So let's rewrite this sort of using generics. And in the interest of you not watching me type a bunch of stuff, I did fill this out before. And I'm gonna just copy paste it in. So if we look again, we have our domain objects, user and company, those aren't going to change. Uh, but now, instead of having two list results, we're going to just have one list result that takes a generic type of T. Um, and that sets our items to an array of that type. And then we have list options, which takes a generic type T, and that sets our order by to that type T. Then the implementation side of it, our user list result is a list result of type user, user list options, list options with a type of name or age, Company list result is a list result of type company, and company list options are a list options with a type of name or state. So you can see we have these angle brackets. That sort of um, is the syntax. So if I try to do a list result and I don't pass a type in, I'm going to get an error saying list result requires one type argument. So we have to pass a type in. And uh, I think this is significantly more easy to read than the previous uh, previous implementation. So we can see user list is a list result of type user. Instead of having to see all these duplicated properties, it's sort of like a mental overload of seeing all that extra code that's kind of duplicated and then you start to ignore it a little bit. Um, so if we need to support multiple generics, we can do that. So let's say our list options here, we're going to support a filter by property. And that can be different for anything that takes options. Uh, and we'll call that 
both my options. And we'll paste that here. And now we need to update our existing types because they're no longer accepting the correct number of types for the generic. So we'll say user list options can filter by name and we'll say company list options can filter by state. So if you see what I what I did here, I didn't use T, I used filter by options, something that's human readable. Um, a lot of the documentation and a lot of examples you're gonna see online are going to use T, that's sort of just an accepted um, variable name for a generic type. And in some cases it makes sense, like in this list result, uh, of type T is, you know, basically what we're, we're sending to our items. Uh, but here for like this order by, we can make this much more descriptive, right? So we could call this order by options. Now it's even more declarative and easy to read. So we see we have list options. You have to pass in order by options. You have to pass in filter by options. And then, you know, they get sent down. So if I take this out again, same thing, it's still not going to work. Requires two options, and when you look up at the type definition, you see filter by options. So you see, oh, that's my second type, it needs to be what I can filter by. So it's sort of self documenting there. So let's say that our, our user list options adds a new, um, a new field called uh, is active. And we want to be able to filter by by activity. I want to be able to pass that differently and we can't use it as a filter by option. It has to be passed separately um, in the options object when we make our call to the API. So if we wanted to do that, instead of having to unspool our types or make is active an optional type on list options, we can use the same tools that we use um, normally with TypeScript. We can um, kind of compose a new object for so user list options is list options and we don't lose any of the previous work that we did. We don't have to unspool our types. We don't have to make them, I guess, less type safe by adding a bunch of optional properties. We can just extend this type. And then if later on we do get um, active added to the filter by options or a company starts to support is active in the same way user does, we can remove this or um, refactor and pull that back into list options. So then we, we kind of remove that type extension and now everything's back to normal. Um, and we didn't have to remove all that refactoring work that we did. We didn't have to jump through any hoops. It was very straightforward, uh, very easy. Uh, so that's, that's really it as sort of a primer on how to use TypeScript generics. Uh, if, you, if you enjoyed this video or are interested in learning more, uh, we're going to link some TypeScript docs in the description here. Uh, also, I wrote a blog post that covers this content and goes a little bit deeper um, into generics. That'll be linked below as well. Uh, if you're interested in more advanced TypeScript, there is a video on our channel covering some advanced TypeScript topics that's very good. So I recommend you check that out. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching, uh, and I'll see you next time.